Guys, this is going to be a short and sweet episode with Greg Krog of Mogollon Rim Outfitters. He's going to be talking about the upcoming mule deer season and elk season in Nevada, what he's seen out there as far as vegetation, monsoon moisture, how antler growth is looking, and what have you. He's also going to be talking a little bit about Arizona, and uh, I want to thank Greg for coming on and sharing uh, time as he was driving um, before he lost service over there in Nevada. I also want to thank you guys, the listeners, for tuning in to this podcast. Without you guys and without your loyalty and your support, uh, this podcast wouldn't be near uh, the podcast that it is as far as success, uh, numbers of downloads, and what have you. I want to thank the sponsors of the podcast and remind you guys about these sponsors and the more that you support them, Uh, the better it is for me. I get lots of emails uh, from you guys asking how you can help uh, support these sponsors. I want to thank Go Hunt Insider and remind you guys that there's a 30-day free trial going on. All you got to do is go to gohunt.com forward slash jscott and you get to take advantage of the free trial uh, as well as Kuyu Ultralight Hunting, Canyon Coolers, and the Outdoorsman's. Uh, You can go to the show notes uh, to look up the different promo codes for each one of these companies, and I appreciate their support. Thanks, guys. Let's get right to the episode. Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today, we've got a good friend of the podcast, Greg Krogh of Mogollon Rim Outfitters. Greg, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Jay. How are you doing? Good. It's been a while since I've talked to you. I think we talked back in the spring during application time, uh, but we're here around the 1st of August, and we're staring at the 2018 fall season right in our face. Uh, how are things looking out in Nevada this year? You know, I'm actually driving back there right now. I'm, I'm actually driving through Las Vegas, and uh, I've made two scouting trips over there, and, you know, the feed looks really good. The elk look phenomenal this year in Nevada. Um, and even before the monsoons they came over there, and they've been having a great monsoon, but even before that, it was really good feed, you know, like around the 5th of July before everything hit, it looked really good. The deer seem to be a little bit behind this year over other years. I'm hoping they're just, you know, further behind. It's, in other words, not, not a bad antler growth year, just started a little late or, you know, going to finish a little later than normal. Um, right. I've seen a lot of deer that, you know, much later than normal, they're still really balled up and growing. So I'm not quite sure how the deer are going to end up. Um we have located a couple of deer from last year that both got bigger, so I'm optimistic about that. You know, um, you know, the fact that they got better this year tells me I don't think it's going to be a bad antler growth year. I think it's probably a combination of maybe they're a little bit late and maybe even an age class thing. A lot of really good deer got shot last year in Nevada, so I think I think I think that's probably the biggest issue we're going to deal with this year is an age class deal. You know, um, I remember this spring or, or this winter when we were talking about applications, you were actually saying that, com- you know, compared to Arizona, you know, that Nevada was not in as bad a shape drought condition-wise, and you felt like going into this season that it was probably going to be another banner year. Are you still under that belief? Obviously, you say the deer might be a little bit, far, you know, further behind than maybe what they would normally would be. Um, do you still feel like, you know, going into, you know, coming out of winter, coming off last fall into winter, into the spring, and now where we're at now that, you know, we're in a position where Nevada did not see the, the drought like Arizona has seen? Well, it's for sure not like Arizona. I mean, it's like, for example, the elk, right off the the elk, I've, I haven't seen this many good elk ever in Nevada, you know, in a long time. And so the elk antler growth, I think, is really, really good. Um, and then in, as far as the deer goes, like I said, I, don't, I really don't think it's antler growth. I, I was really happy with the, the feed. It's, it's really good. Not, now, there's some southern units, like, you know, the, the, the southern parts of 24 are really dry, and I think they're going to be very droughty this year, so the real deserty unit. But as far as the other units up north and, you know, north of there, like the 22s and the... 231s, 131, 134, the feed looks good, and, and it looks good early. So I think I think it's an age class deal, you know. And, and the fact that the two deer that I can identify from last year, 100%, that I know are last year's deer, and they both got better, quite a bit better, 
that tells me it's not an antler growth issue. I haven't heard of yeah. anybody in Arizona finding an animal from last year that got better. Have you? Yeah. No, I mean, I mean it's, it's kind of across the board that everyone's saying it's definitely an, an off year, and we kind of knew that going in and, you know, obviously trying to be optimistic, hoping that maybe things would, you know, get better. I mean, I know we've had over the last couple of weeks some decent monsoons around and things are greening up, but as far as antler growth in Arizona, you know, it sounds like it's too, you know, too little too late and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's already past due. Um, you're starting, you're headed back over to Nevada. I mean, the, the one thing about Nevada's deer hunts, I mean, don't they start like pretty quick, like in 10 days or two weeks? They start you early start- compared to a lot of the states. Yeah, a week from this coming Friday is archery deer opener. So um, yeah. August tenth, and uh, so yeah, we're getting down to crunch time now. And, and uh, you know, like I said, I just I think it's more. I'm still optimistic. I mean, we haven't. You know, there's still a lot to look at. You know, and there's still a lot of country we haven't looked into yet this year. So I'm still optimistic based on the fact that the few deer that we have identified have gotten better. So. And then just how good the elk are doing, you know. So the yeah. feeds there, the monsoons for sure, I think they've been getting them good over there. It seems like I'm getting rained on every day over there. And and then I just went home to switch trucks out, get some work done on a truck, and, man, I can't believe how green it is back home. We've had, I think one of my neighbors has had nine inches in Arizona, you know, this monsoon so far, which is incredible, yeah, I mean, you know. And like you said, it's probably it's definitely late for the antler growth now, but, we still needed it, you know. Yeah. Now, back to the mule deer in Nevada, I mean, wouldn't you say even between now and the next 10 days, I mean, those deer are p- putting on the inches, you know, every day. And the fact that, you know, even up until the season, I mean, you you have bucks that are just, I mean, still continuing to grow. Would you agree? Absolutely. You know, and even on a normal year, some of those bucks we kill, like on the opener, they're still not completely done, you know. So that's on a normal year. So I think for sure they're still growing for another 10 to 12 days. And then, and yeah. there's some that I, I'm 100% sure are not even close to done, you know, just really balled up. Um, I saw a buck last week that was just making all four of his forks, you know, and was maybe, you know, two inches on all of them, but big balls and a very big deer, you know, heavy and wide and just now forking. So I yeah. think there's some of them that are just behind is all. So I, that's what we're hoping, you know, we, we keep looking at some of these deer and, you know, you see a 180, I, it reminds me of a few years back, we saw one year, uh, I was out with somebody scouting we, and we went early and we thought, man, I'd never seen someone, so many really good 175 to 180 class deer without seeing one really big deer. Then we came back two weeks later and there was six or seven bucks in the high 90s, you know, and they were the same deer, they just kept growing, you know. Yeah, for sure. And as far as the elk in Nevada, you know, you you saying they're looking really, really good. How much of that, of you know, is a function of age class, like you were talking, and how much of it is a function of, you know, they they came in, out of winter doing pretty good, and and you know, conditions being ripe, or or is it more of an of, of an age structure with the actual animal? I think it's both with the elk. Um, you know. We've talk, you and I, I know I've talked about this in the past, you know, whenever you have a great banner year, it's always tough to follow it. Last year seemed to be a down year on elk, you know, over there, you know, for whatever reason. there weren't. I didn't think it was as good as it was the last couple of years as far as bulls getting killed. You know, really big, a lot of bulls that were really big last year broke up and nobody shot them because they were too busted up. So I think there was a lot of carryover, and then I think it was just a really good, um, I think in Nevada the perfect storm there is kind of a mild winter and then good spring, and, uh, you know, they got some late rains, and they got really timely rains, so, like I said, I haven't seen it, like, when I got over there for the first scouting trip this year, in in some of those elk units, it was the best I've seen the feed in a long time, you know, for, for that early, you know, obviously, once the monsoon starts at all, it gets better, sorry, did that cut out a little bit there? No, I got you fine, um, well, that's fantastic, and obviously, you've got uh, archery, uh, mule deer hunters uh, in Nevada, and then you've got archery elk hunters. Um, Where are you going to be spending most of your time this year as far as Arizona goes for elk once you finish uh, with your your deer and such? Do you have specific units that you're going to be focusing on this year uh, in Arizona? You know, in Arizona, yeah, in Arizona, 
you know, by the time all those Arizona, the Nevada draws are done, there's really not many hunts left. We don't really do a whole lot in Arizona. Um, so I'm going to be doing a couple weeks of archery elk hunting, and we're going to be in 8 and 6A. And then, uh, and then the late hunts we're going to do uh, in 23. Okay. So the rest okay. of the time we're all back in Nevada. Did you draw any hunts yourself personally? Or I know your daughters um, over the years have drawn a few tags here and there. Um, do you have any personal or family hunts that, that you're, you know, looking forward to? Yeah, my, my daughter has drawn an antelope tag in the unit where we live in 19A. So that's going to be pretty exciting. Um, she actually, my, my, my dad actually drew it. So her, her grandpa drew it and passed it down to her on that program. So uh -huh. um, I know she's got that, and that's kind of a thing. They're going to do it on their own. My dad wants to kind of take her out and have this be him, and just, just him and her do this antelope hunt together. So um, she, I know she's really excited about that. She and I have been doing a lot of the scouting for it, but she's going to go and do the hunt with Grandpa, so she's, she's pretty excited. And then I've drawn. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm really excited about that. She's, it's pretty neat, you know, to be right where you live, you know, shoot the best shoot one of the best bucks we've seen is like literally and my wife saw it pulling out of our driveway across the road from our house <laughs> we're right up in state land it's the best luck we've seen so far was 75 yards from our front door uh, <laughs> but i doubt he'll be there by then but uh yeah but anyway um and then i drew a colorado tag uh for oh, cool. deer again uh third season uh mule deer tag so i'm excited about that Good for you. The last time I talked to you, you were actually banged up. You had been in that bad accident. Um, how has your recovery been, and how, how is your health right now? Great. Yeah, I, I finally recovered from that, and uh, uh, they replaced my car, got a new vehicle, and, uh, yeah, I just my ribs, were, it took forever. You know, I don't know if you ever had broken ribs, but I had broken ribs, and then my left shoulder has been messed up ever since then, but it's getting better and better all the time, so it's I wouldn't say it's a hundred percent. It still hurts like, like backpacking really hurts my shoulder, like sleeping, you know, when you're not in a bed. But other than that, I'm, I'm a hundred percent, mainly just sleeping issues. How was your roping this summer? Did you get out quite a bit? Yeah, we got to do a bunch. It was fun. Probably more than ever this year. So it was a good time. Did you win any money? I, I, was, I, I won more than I ever had before. That's not saying. Yeah, I had a really good year for me. You're going to quit outfitting and go strictly to a pro, pro rodeo roping. Uh, I, I would starve. <laughs> I, would, I would definitely starve. Uh, no, we, just, um, we, we had well, a lot of fun, though. We got to do a lot. We had a, got to have our last day at the house. And I, I actually had trucks, and so some buddies came over up just for a little bit yesterday. But now it's been a fun. We've had this, – this winter was, you know, in Arizona, like it was so – it just seemed like it was – seemed like it was spring and summer the whole year, didn't it? Yeah, for sure. It's um, for, for someone that likes the rope, it was a good environment, I'm sure, for you, um, you know, having those mild days for sure. So, Greg, it's been great uh, getting the scoop from you, and I'm looking forward to seeing how you, your clients do uh, over there. And, and I know you guys shoot giant stuff every year, so I'm looking forward to seeing the pictures. I want to encourage people to check you out on Instagram. Uh, but also wanted to give you a chance to let listeners know how they can follow along uh, your website, uh, how they can get a hold of you, et cetera, if they want to put in for the draw next year. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, just uh, they can get a hold of my website at uh, muggyonrimoutfitters.com or on Instagram at uh, just Greg Krogh, Greg underscore Krogh, K-R-O-G-H. Awesome, man. Well, put some big old deer and some bulls on the ground, and I look forward to following you along, checking out the pictures, and it's always great to hear from you. Um, I appreciate you taking the time as you're traveling uh, to your hunting grounds over there in Nevada and taking the time to share with the listeners a little bit about the forecast and what you're seeing. And uh, best, of, best of luck to you, and, and uh, you guys always do such a great job, so I'm just uh, anxious to see how you do this year. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. All right, buddy. Take care. God bless. All right. Take care.